Hi guys, welcome to another All Ball Special. Today I have with me a very, very special guest. He's a head coach of the I League Second Division side Goa Reserves, which is the reserve team to FC Goa from the Indian Super League, and a member of the senior Indian national team. I like to welcome with us today Clifford Miranda. Clifford, it's an honor to have you. How is it going? Uh, thank you so much. The, the honor is mine, and I've been good. Thank you, Clifford. Thank you so much for joining us, Clifford. I love asking our guests this question because for me, this is you know one of my favorite questions: the love for football. When and where and how did it come alive? Uh, you know, it's been uh, the thing that about the uh, Goa is you know the most famous thing about Goa is of course its beaches and it's it's football. And when I was growing up, the only thing that uh, attracted me that I had. You know, we as kids were playing mostly in in the neighborhood or wherever we could was was football. And that uh, you know developed uh, from being a hobby, from being a habit, from being a, a outing uh, after studies to taking it up uh, on a, on a serious level. And of course, the encouragement from my from my father and my mother, which was, uh, which was of, of great importance, because uh, at a time when I was quite good at, in academics. And I, I had a different uh, career path, you know, but then uh, football came calling, and I thought like, okay, if I can make it, then then why not? And then from there on, I went to the Tata Football Academy uh, when I was I think 13 years old, and yeah, this this that was the moment like I thought like, okay, let me take up uh, football as a, as a profession, and let's see where it goes. And of course, my parents, both of them, my father and my mother, uh, supported me unconditionally. Yes, I mean absolutely. You know, in India, to play football is it's 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 a huge achievement. It's great what you've achieved. You spoke about the Tata Football Academy. You know, you joined in 1996. So tell us a little about that. You know, how it was to move from playing on the beaches of Goa, like you mentioned, to a nice pro academy. Uh, you know, back then, back then, Tata Football Academy was the best in the country, the premier academy in the country, and. There was a saying that uh, if you join that academy and graduate from the from from it, then for you the club is guaranteed. Is was the 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 term that time, and it was true because it was the best academy. And how I went was uh, I went there on trial. I was playing for a club called Salsit. Uh, it was uh, uh, I think uh, uh, Mr. Alberto Colasso, the former. Uh, Secretary of AFF was the was the president of the club, and I think to them they he facilitated some uh, uh, the move for us for six of us to go for on go go on trial at the academy. Eventually, I was selected there, and then for me to get selected there was a big moment. And then for the next uh, four years, uh, I am what I am is what they taught me. You know? They taught me everything about uh, about from from being a, a teenager, a boy. To making me a man, not just in terms of football, but in terms of uh, teaching me the the real real world as well. You know, I learned everything from the the way, the discipline, everything. This is like, of course, I'm not talking, talking in terms of football, but besides football, they taught me a lot of lot of things. Like uh, really, they introduced me to the world. The academy introduced me to the world, to to the life outside my home. Because prior to that, prior to going to on trials in the academy, I had never stayed one night away from my home. And then I stayed there for four years. And even in terms of football, uh, from a striker, they made me play as a winger, and they developed they developed me. You know, they developed my speed, developed the the, the desire to work hard, um, the attitude to, to be resilient is what they taught me there. You know, of course, they did, don't come and teach you literally, but you learn it through your experience by being with uh, other players from different states. By when you see yourself being challenged by. By other players, and for me, that stint there was and will always mean the best moment or the defining moment of my life, of 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 my of my uh, you know the step from being a teenager to introducing myself into professional football. That's that's absolutely wonderful, and that's great to hear. You spoke about you know them grooming you and making you the player you are, and in those four years, and then like you said, the senior professional league back in in two thousand, you joined Dempo. So you know how is how is that feeling? To you, you now you're finally in the circuit. So it's only upwards from there. Uh, there's a bit of story as well there. You know, uh, we were I think we were 16 boys that year. Usually 18 boys usually graduate from the academy, 
but we were 16 that year and of all 15 of them uh, joined the national league clubs 15 of them joined national league club and i was the only one uh, who joined dempo and back then dempo was in the second division uh, dempo had got relegated the year before uh, and they were in the second division and i was not very keen on joining them because i was keen on joining churchill i had offer from churchill and i wanted to join churchill uh, but uh, to be honest uh, my heart was uh, uh, to join salgaonkar but somehow things didn't happen with them they i would say yeah they rejected me uh, that's true. they rejected me they said i was too young and then uh, i had offer from churchill but uh, somehow you know somehow i didn't want uh, my heart was not uh, wanting to join churchill so and i had offer from them so i joined them even though they in the second they were in the second division uh, uh, i i you know i said okay let me let me try because uh, and the fact that was bothering me was at the back of my mind was that 15 of father players have joined the national league clubs and what clubs in the national league and what will people think what what would be my future there were so many questions uh, that were going on but i said like let me let me join them and i joined them and of course uh, armand kulaso was the coach you know he gave me the confidence to play play football at the highest level in india and from 2000 till 2015 that's that's the whole career i stayed there you know for me that one decision to stay there with them to join them in the second division just turned my entire career professional career i played my entire football there i won everything almost there in indian football they like if if they have introduced me as the uh, you know introduced me as to to professional football the bridge uh, acted as the bridge uh, between youth and professional football dempo just gave me that uh, you know act as that catalyst to be the to be the player that uh, i am today you know for me dempo has been it's like i often think that okay my blood is blue because uh, i have wore blue color for such a long while in my life that uh, i could not think of uh, any other color for me yeah dempo was was and will always be my club it's like i always refer to it as my club yes and it's always the decisions i think which you make you know from inside which you feel are right and you know in your case it worked out very well you were with them for 15 years we will talk about another blue in your career a little later but in 15 16 you joined the ISL with ATK you know that time the ISL huge in the country biggest professional league talk us to that you know sometimes uh, it's like like you said no sometimes you make the decisions sometimes the decisions you know they choose you to make themselves you know and about uh, of course and was it was a thing both with tempo especially with tempo like you know it was like i would say it was it was kind of written in the stars you know that i should be i should be with them for me to be the player that i am today or that i was over the over the over, over my professional career about uh, the isl thing of course uh, the thing is that i didn't make my debut i would like to clarify that i didn't make my debut with the atk i made my debut with fc goa i played for fc goa in the first year. thing was in the year 2000 so the first isl i was with uh, i was with dempo and then we were loaned since dempo uh, fc goa were partly owned by dempo along with the, along with sadankar and videocon uh, 15 of the 16 players i think 16 players were loaned from dempo to fc goa and i was uh, one of them and of course they made me the face of the year that year uh, fc goa and i played my first season at fc goa under zico uh, in the isl and then the next second year of course i played uh, i played more in the isl with fc goa then i will uh, i will have love to play with atk because atk i did not play much under habas i didn't play much but of course i like the experience there uh, of being in atk but yeah i played more at uh, fc goa than uh, than uh, at atk but of course it was uh, it revolutionized football you know i sell i will say brought a sea of change to be honest i had my apprehensions when they started the league i had my apprehensions i was thinking maybe it was not the league it was not the league that uh, Uh, was meant to develop indian football but uh, just it's always nice to be wrong sometimes and i was wrong uh, but it's good to be wrong, you know because any teams you know the the performance of uh, of any you know any 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 club or of the performance of uh, any any country the football the development of any football is uh, is related to the national team you can gauge uh, 
the develop where how much strides the the the, the, the fo- of football in a country has taken by the performance of the national team. and if you go to see in this moment the national team is playing really really well in my opinion huh? they are competing against players against team that uh, should thrash us to be honest you know so and how how it has happened partly a big reason is uh, is the isl because what happened was isl brought the uh, professional real professionals in the football like how football is was being played at higher level you know when we used to play in the i league and then go play in the national team it was two different atmospheres but what isl did was they bridged that gap between 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 when you play for the national team and when you play in the i league you know they made uh, they brought professional coaches good coaches the clubs uh, good players came into 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 the isl better training facilities uh, top uh, top arrangements you know that and the atmosphere the environment in the stadium it was on par when you play, play in the national team you know play whenever you play with the national team the timings of the games all this thing and of course the confidence of the player playing alongside someone like robert pires or someone like uh, uh, someone like uh, andre santos you know it, it was someone like uh, del, del piero or roberto carlos you know, or, or other play, other really good players who are not well known but good technique good players from from foreign teams that helped uh, indian that has helped indian players uh, to gain in confidence and ultimately it has uh, what it has done is what it has done is it has done to develop uh, indian players to play uh, well at the international team and compete against uh, or at least try to compete against uh, better asian teams i think i absolutely agree with you there we've been watching the national side play and you know we're really proud but clifford speaking of the national side 2005 you got your call up you know it's every professional athlete's dream to play for the national side tell us that feeling when you stepped onto the pitch you know okay. in the india jersey it was special you know i remember before that uh, before that uh, in 2001 again i was being called up for the national team uh, it was my first call in 2001 but it never happened because uh, of you know um, again it was pakistan it was a soft cup but it never materialized never went on because uh, there was this twin tower attack in um, in new york and the tournament got uh, shelved and then uh, the coach national team coach got changed and for two or three years i was not being called up of course, of course they had their reasons and then sukwinder uh, singh who gave me my debut against pakistan uh, called me up for the camp and for me it was memorable you know my first uh, first uh, you know my first international playing against uh, pakistan in pakistan we won the game starting the game for me that was uh, what was really special like for me that was the moment when for me when like you know when i started football i wanted to play for the national team my father wanted me to play for the national team my father really badly wanted me to play for the national team and that was a very very big moment for him for me as well and for my family when when i finally wore uh, wo wo the national i finally played the national team of course at the, at the at the senior level it was it was really special yes i mean absolutely you had 45 appearances six goals you were part of the side that you know won the nehru cup in 07 and 09 and the afc challenge cup in 2008 so talk us through that you know the squad the participation the winning feeling with the national side to be in the national team itself is, is special to be to be called up in the camp itself is special imagine uh, you being called up in the camp uh, uh, among around 200 300 players it is it is it is special and then once you go up there and start competing against players who are who are the best 30 players in the country you know this is it is a feeling that uh, first you need to sulk you know you need to save the moment and then you need that feeling to sink in and then you need to and that should be quick and then you need to prepare yourself to compete because if you are not then you have to do is you have to go home back again and for me it was important to to of course what important for me to be called up in the national team but also important for me to go out there and perform you know and perform and take the best of my ability so that i am there year after year after year after year for me that was very important and i think i was i had some fantastic coaches out there right from all my national team coaches being right from you know, so kwinda singh to to bob horton to to sabe mendera to armand klaus and of course not to forget uh, wim poem you know who was who was very special so for me i enjoyed playing with all these coaches i for me i based my game right whether it was in the national team or uh, 
uh, or whether it was um, at the club level i based my game on 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 the ability to work hard on the ethic non work ethic for me that is the most important thing because i always believe that uh, hard work can take you know you know your talent can take you only so much okay then we'll give you a platform but you need to work hard to to sharpen that uh, that that tell and for me that was very very important to to be in the national team on my ability but then to work hard and to be in the team and to consolidate my my position there to to play for for many years to come and of course i would have played a uh, i played 45 internationals you are right uh, i would have played maybe more than more than that but i remember i i lost out on at least 30 or 40 internationals only because of injury because imagine the level of uh, the national team there where where you go and you play at the high league at a different level and then you play in the national team at a at a high level even the camp so yeah i lost a lot of matches uh, due to injuries but that's part of life yes absolutely injuries are a part of football uh, clifford you're a professional coach now but before we get into that you know you mentioned a lot of coaches uh, we had a special mention of bob huton who you played very regularly under so a word on him and a word on you know how these different coaches have influenced you as a player and to take up coaching professionally for me uh, i have based you know uh, i like the way how bob carried himself for me he is he's a true professional not just in terms of uh, the for his ability to read the game but for his for his ability to man- manage players you know to man manage different egos different type of players and the way how and the and the moment you know to choose the right moment and the right words to speak to you he knew it he knew it and for me he was he was uh, he's 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 excellent in that and a few things i have picked up from him and i would i would love to be to be like him of course my other coaches as well but for me it was bob the the right moment to pick to speak to you the right words to pick to speak to you you know i will tell you this instance now we were supposed to play in the south cup uh yeah in in colombo uh, no in male and um, a week by uh, uh, to uh, 15 days before that i broke my shin bone in delhi four pieces you know both meta uh, uh, yeah four four pieces but tb and fibula and i thought my my dream is over and then it was like i was in crutch i could not walk i was in crutches i had to come back uh, to goa the next day i was being lifted and then i came to the hospital i was in the hospital bob came to see me in the hospital you know for me that was special bob came to see me to me see me in the hospital and just said one thing to me possibly he played it with my mentality he said like if don't worry the camp has got cancelled the camp in mali has got cancelled the tournament has got cancelled and the tournament has been postponed to from 5 months from now for sure you will be in the camp i will surely call you in the camp imagine i'm on the bed not sure whether i'll be able to play football uh, after four or five months or no because of shin bone both my multal both my uh, bones are broken and he's telling me he will call me for the camp and true to his word he called me for the camp and he played me in the he kept called me for the camp kept me in the camp for two months and made me play and i i got fitter and i played and the first match i played was in the national team was for the national team after breaking my shin bone in 5 6 yeah 5 and a half month for me that was a big moment you know the fact that he come in the hospital and tell me i'm thinking about quitting football i'm thinking about whether i'll be able to play football or not and he's coming and he's telling me you're there in the camp you'll call i'll call you in the camp and he kept his word and he made me play for me this you know like playing with my mentality for me that was a big 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 moment you know like for me these are the things that um, that we must learn you know as a coach like now big i have become a coach we must uh, try to take this learn this things you know we must try to um, you know try to not just in terms of coaching but in terms of uh, understanding the player these things are so so important and for me yeah, it was a, a big moment and speaking of coaching one of your former coaches uh, derek pereira he you know convinced you to take up coaching professionally so how is that experience going from you know national level player you've been there you've done that and now you're taking your teams the youngsters of the country through that same process so how is that experience uh, no to be uh, to be honest uh, uh, i met uh, you know uh, i uh, i met derek uh, well in my final year at churchill ironically i was supposed to play for churchill in my first year but i ended my career playing for churchill <laughs> 
it was my last year and he was my coach there and as soon as the the final game game got over he he gave me a call and i already done my b license and i was uh, in the process of uh, doing a license for me licenses were just a means of like keeping them ready so that like you know if something happens i'll always can fall uh, fall back upon but uh, but uh, so he gave me a call and he he asked me if i am ready to if i be if he asked me if i'll be if i'll be ready to join fc go uh, in the in the reserve team the thing is that uh, he wanted someone who has played the game someone who has been uh, played for for some time and this is the reason he he you know he tried to convince me to join uh, fc go he tried to convince me to join fc go and of course he did convince me uh, to join fc go because to join fc to join into coaching i had to leave football so yeah he did convince me he did uh, tell me the benefits of being a coach early in a career you know to be coaching uh, under 18s and development team and the benefits of being with fc go you know because they had a they had a project he explained to me their project Uh, and i was like convinced i was like after after some, i was not immediately convinced but after some time after giving a lot of thought after speaking to my wife and my family i finally decided like okay i will take up coach i will i will join fc go but the person who so he convinced me to join fc go again but the person who really uh, uh, you know impressed upon me to take up coaching was uh, was uh, arthur papas you know for me he's he was in my final year at tempo and for me uh, i have never met a, a person as more detailed than than arthur for me he is he is uh, his uh, his uh, ability to communicate communicate his ability to uh, re you know uh, analyze games to ability to his fantastic uh, ways of uh, preparing a team a young team especially i was impressed and his attention to detail being a young coach himself i was impressed i was mighty impressed with him and you know the way how he and since i was a senior figure there at fc goa and i was the captain and he uh, uh, you know uh, he he kind of took me into conference while taking decisions be it team or be it training session he involved me in a lot of his uh, plannings so that is how when i started getting interested in coaching interested in coaching so and the the way how he worked really got me interested i really am impressed by him i still am you know i'm still in awe of him the way how he worked the way how he he analyzed games uh, and that's how you know that's it's the it's the first instance about him that uh, that really got me got me interested interested in coaching of course derek after that derek convinced me to take up uh, to leave football for uh, playing professional football and uh, take up uh, take up coaching of course the fact also is true that i wanted to leave football when i'm still good you know for me i want to leave on my own terms rather than being told to uh shun off so i that was that also played a part in my my decision that that's absolutely wonderful uh clifford we will now move into our next segment uh we have got some pictures for you which we want to show you and just for you to talk us through those pictures so let's have our first one okay this uh, on the on on my uh, on the on the right of my screen is my father and on the left of uh, me is uh, is uh, the man in glasses is my my daddy's best friend this is for the conv- convocation in 2000 uh, in tfa my daddy and my uncle had come for the convocation yeah okay let's move on to our next one uh i think uh, if i'm not mistaken is a moment when i scored in the finals against uh, afghanistan uh i'm not sure i think so i think we yeah, are in the finals against i think we won the won the final in the saf cup i think we won 4-0 and i think uh, i scored against afghanistan i think so i think so oh i think so looks like <laughs> it's quite it's quite an energetic picture and energetic celebration but then we will go on to our next one and this one special uh yeah it is uh, again the nehru cup uh, me and sunil we won i think he scored two goals and i scored two goals i think so i had not i think it was against bhutan uh, if i'm not mistaken in the in the nehru cup the last nehru cup so was there like a little competition going on of who's going to yeah yeah on? i think he was uh, he was being given the man of the match or something like that but that was okay and i was like i was like pulling his leg like why you and why not me 
but it's always happens. Okay, let's go on to our next one. Of course, this is last year's picture. It's a, it's a fantastic picture, a fantastic moment for the club. You know, playing in the Champions League for the very first time uh, the, uh, in the group stages, and uh, we did well. As I must say, FC Goa did really, really well, and uh, it's, a, it's a great picture with uh, some some very good players and some good players. Some I think uh, Igor is missing out there, if I'm not mistaken. Just said, and so is Alberto, but. Uh, is still a still a good place still, no i no he goes there is it's, it's a good picture it's a, you know it's a good moment for the club as well and for me it's a big moment because uh, i'm sitting next to one his uh, his assistant his first assistant yes yeah, so it's a, it's, a, it's a good thing for the it's a big moment for the club because uh, no one expected the club to have uh, come you know no one gave us a fighting chance in the champions league and i think we we squeezed up three points it would, would have been more you were also interim manager for fc goa if i'm if That's i remember right. for the for the for the last year because one had to they had to leave the country unfortunately they had to leave the country and yeah it was again 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 a big moment for me you know first like for being in the 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 head coach that they against um, against the club from uae we have another couple of pictures we will take you to our second last one uh this was uh, yeah, last year at the beginning of the pre season when a few players were short short uh, less and i decided to join in in the rondos yeah. but i'm more I'm sure. so. <laughs> i'm sure they must have had a fun time no, no, last this, one they were trying to nick the ball to between my legs but of course they were not successful but yeah they were trying <laughs> they are this today's generation is really good i must say they are confident <laughs> no, seriously they are the, the generation of of today is much more talented much more uh, confident about their, themselves you know uh, and much more exposed of course to social media and to different but the prob- but i believe they have a problem and the problem is mentality you know, they just need to de- the, the 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 resilience they have to develop the resilience the fighting spirit uh, the the attitude you know the fighting ability is what they, i feel they must develop but in terms of talent and in terms of ability i think they are, they are really really good and clifford our last one is very very special yeah against uh, yul nigelsman you know i met him for around 15 20 minutes but it was uh, it was one moment it was my, one of my it was one of the criteria of my pro diploma that i had to do uh, a club attachment with a foreign club and thankfully thanks to fc goa you know they have they used their connection to get me to to leipzig i was there for two weeks and uh, it was a very good moment for me to meet uh, meet the uh, yul nigelsman was uh, was asking about uh, indian football and uh, how you know surprising that india and china is difficult for us to why you know the reason for us that why despite being such a such populous countries uh, we cannot uh, you know be as developed and also usa we, why we cannot uh, develop as many footballers but it was yeah, it was a nice moment uh, nice you know it's good of you Clifford, that brings the end to our pictures. But before I let you go, one very important question, like you just mentioned, of uh, the generation today uh, of football. You know, the youngsters, they've been exposed to more in terms of social media. There is better infrastructure in terms of places to play, turfs, etc., compared to as it was, you know, some years ago. So, do you see that as Indian football progressing in the right direction? you know with young coaches young players us competing at the highest level and doing well so what is your opinion on that uh, for me you know in my opinion in my opinion it is as simple as well as complex it's it's simple because the way how you make of it for example social media can be can be really strong and really good if you channelize it in the in the positive way and i'll give you one example for example so many matches so many football matches so many moments so many you know they can show clippings of yours and so many you oh, can watch your foreign players everything you can do you can use it in a positive way or you can use it in a negative way and how i say in a positive way positive way is like through through you know to to, to make your reach known more further more far and in negative way how is like if you you know sometimes what happens is you're more focused on the social media saying you are more focused on clicking uh, you know when the photographer clicks a picture rather than doing your job you are more focused on how your hair looks rather than uh, what your game is 
of course all these things are important your appearance because part of the package believe me but 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 the most important part here is the most important part with social media if we channelize in the proper in a more positive way is is to of course to to generate more uh, more outreach of yours but at the same time do not forget the basics do not forget how football is played football is not played in pictures football is not played in uh, by coming your hair or by having a certain haircut football always remain the same how what was 20 40 50 years back on the field you still have to go out there work hard put your head down work hard for yourself for your teammate and for the team for you to get success or for you to be successful this should not be forgotten but what happens in the process yeah uh, the people the boys now like i said this generation they are talented they are supremely talented and they are confident they are not scared they don't care about no one huh? which is fantastic i like the attitude but what they must do is like when the chips are down when the things are not going well is the time they must dig in they must work hard they must put their own base their game on ability to work hard on work ethic you know not on not on nothing else not on complaining not on if you're not being given a chance not to complain to this one or that one or agent or coach or this no 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 work hard put your head down convince the coach no problem with the social media put your pictures or upload your videos no problem is perfect but don't forget at the end of the day it is still the football pitch and you still need to work hard on that pitch to convince the coach that you are you are good enough and if you do that i think we have a very very good future and the other part of course is coaches other part is coaches which is so so important um, okay infrastructure everything is is fine but we need to have coaches who can develop players coaches who themselves are developed you know who themselves are, are working hard alone with themselves by by enriching by acquiring more knowledge by acquiring more knowledge of the game by acquiring uh, by getting watching more matches by analyzing more matches for example and by being confident about themselves you know like for example if uh, one of our indian coaches get the uh, gets to coach in the national coach national team or the or the isl club they should not back them so they should back themselves up that they can do the job and how they can do that only if their knowledge is strong only if their belief is strong only if they know what they are doing only when they have the answers before even the players ask the question you understand even before the players ask them the question be it foreigner is indian they have the answers and how they can do this we can do this we are we can do this by preparing ourselves every day by watching matches by acquiring more knowledge is at a higher level and at a lower level at a grassroots youth level we need coaches who can work with players you know and these are special coaches we need these coaches who can work with grassroots you you know who can rather than focus on the result who focus on the players development on the technique and at the same time of course teach them a bit of technique but teach them technique uh, you know for example when we played in played against fc goa played against um, this uh, foreign team we didn't lack in technique we were good in technique but what we lack and we tried to make up was technique and we can't teach them at when you are 20 21 okay you can only improve so much but this you can teach them when they are growing up when they are 8 9 10 11 12 this is time you can teach them technique and we need this coaches i mean special coaches here who can focus on the technique who can uh, teach them the right uh, coaching points now so yeah this 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 if this two things are combined uh, i think uh, we have a we have a very 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 good future absolutely clipper that was yeah. No, no, that was very insightful and very helpful, and I'm sure you know all the young footballers who are viewing this will obviously love to hear this, and will take a lot from this. Clifford, that brings us to the end. Thank you so much for joining us, for giving us your time. It was an absolute pleasure and an honor on behalf of me and the family. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Rahul. Thanks a lot, and the pleasure is mine. I'm honored as well. Thank you. Yes, we hope you and family are in good health, and we hope you stay safe. Thank you. I wish the same for you and for Kai. Take care. Thank you.